grace and peace, beloved God. And welcome to Morning Star Church Summer Bible Study. This is our Gospel Fest 2022, where we're doing a deep dive into the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so today, we're going to be looking at chapter 7, the last of the sayings of Jesus um, in, in the Sermon on the Mount. And so I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I welcome you on behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Beverly D. Frazier, and the assistant pastor, Pastor Neil Ferguson. So glad that you're with us again. I'm Reverend Sister Kathy. They call me Pastor Kathy. Glad to be your teacher uh, through this summer series. This is um, a challenge God put on my heart. So I thank God that he saw that I was worthy for the challenge. And I am enjoying, and I hope you are too, uh, going through each and every one of these chapters in the Gospels. It is our hope and our prayer that we can go deeper in our relationship with Christ, that we can grow as disciples of Christ so that we can fill God's destiny for our lives while we're yet on this earth. In Jesus' name, uh, let us pray. Most gracious and holy God, sovereign God, sovereign God, we thank you for another opportunity to open up the bread of life, your word. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would enter into our study. We ask that you would allow your Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us and to teach us all things and to usher us into the place of truth of thy holy word. We thank you for salvation in your son, Jesus Christ. It is our hope and our prayer that we will grow closer to Christ, that he will walk with us and talk with us. Oh, and tell us that we're his own. Ah, that we know that he is our friend, but he's also our king, our leader. He reigns forever. Oh, Lord, it is my prayer that anyone who watches these videos, that they would gain insight, Lord. So open our eyes that we can see your purpose in your word. Open our ears that we can hear what your word is saying. Open our heart to have compassion and for your word to fall on good ground where we can produce a hundredfold. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, and Lord, strengthen our hands for the work you're calling us to do in these last and evil days. God, be glorified and be magnified in this time of reading and sharing and teaching. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise be to God. Okay, I'm in the NIV version of the Bible. And I will be reading from chapter 7 of Matthew. And um, I will be making commentary as we're going along verse by verse, line by line, precept by precept. And here are the scriptures. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, it will be measured to you. Okay, this is going to be our first stop. As a good friend of mine says, uh, we in the Christian church are the most judgmental people <laughs> that one can find on earth in America. We're judgmental. We judge others. God did not make us the judge. And Jesus is telling us here, do not judge or you too will be judged. Can we live up to the standard that we're expecting of somebody else? Can we allow the same measuring rod that we want to measure other people with? Can we withstand that? Do we forget that God forgives us of our sins? Who are we to be measuring, counting the sins of others? No, 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 no. There before the grace of God go I. No, don't judge. We need to, we need to stop being so judgmental. And dare I say that it is that judgmental spirit that has run young people away. It's that judgmental spirit that have judged, that have run people away that are having challenges in their life. As if we never had challenges in our lives. As if we, as, 
we act as if we have never fallen. We act as we have never sinned. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the same measure you, you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eyes and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Lord have mercy. Uh, there have been so many times when people would want to say, well, this is just who I am. You know, you need to accept me just who I am. But yet that same person does not want to accept other people for who they are. Mm. Be careful. Don't try to take the plank out your brother's eyes. Take the speck out your brother's eyes when you've got a log, a plank in your own eyes. Verse six, do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under your feet and turn and tear you into pieces. Amen. The reason why I like this scripture is because um, I don't believe in arguing with people about the scriptures. You know, I know what I believe. I stand on what I believe, but I'm not going to debate it with you. Uh, God's not called me to be a debater of the word. <laughs> no, God's called me to be a teacher of the word, the proclaimer of the word. Um, but I believe in the unadulterated word of God. If you don't like what it says, take that up with God. Ask, seek, and not. knock. Verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be open. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Ask, seek, and knock. That is our challenge as disciples. Are we asking God to give us deep, deep life revelation? Are we asking God what is it that he's calling us to do? Are we seeking God in our prayer life, in our prayer closet, as we talked about the other night? Are we seeking to do God's will or are we just seeking to do our own will? Are we seeking to fulfill God's word or we're just seeking to fulfill our own lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes and the pride of life? Are we really knocking? knocking on that door uh, to see what we can learn. I know that when I went to law school, I asked, I sought, and I knocked, and I studied that law. And so the same way that I did that for the law, uh, I tried to do it for the Holy Word of God. I tried to do it in my relationship with God. I knock on that door. Lord, please listen to me. Lord, I'm seeking you. Lord, I'm knocking for clarity. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And again on verse 12. So verse 12 is really like a NIV version of the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Oh, what a better place this could be if indeed we treated others the way we would want to be treated ourselves. Oh, what a wonderful place this would be if we would put in check our own mean-spiritedness, if we put in check again our own judgmental spirit. Ah, but what would it be like if we indeed showed the love of Christ? Showed the love as we would a newborn baby. Showed the love as we would. I know I adore my children and my grandchildren. So if I can show them love, Lord have mercy. That's the kind of love I seek. I don't always make it. That I seek to show to others. That I love and care 
for them in the name of Jesus. Verse 13, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. Many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Now, you know, when I was growing up, I thought that, you know, with so many churches, do you know, there's like a church on every corner in some cities across this land. Um, and so I always thought that the, the road was broad and wide for Christians to go through. But we're living in a time where those who proclaim to be Christians, those who proclaim to be evangelicals, um, seem to be walking down a broad road that leads to destruction. It is my prayer that I am reading that wrong, seeing it wrong. Uh, but small is the gate and narrow on the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. And we know that if we want life, we need to seek Jesus Christ, because Jesus said that he came that we might have life, and life more abundantly, and that the enemy seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, so let us look for life in that narrow road, that narrow gate of Jesus Christ. We seek it through studying his word. We seek it through applying his word. We seek it by living his word out loud. And all that we say and all that we do and all that we think, yes, we fall short, but God gives us grace to confess our sins, to have the Holy Spirit pick us up, dust us off, so we can get back on that narrow road again. Verse 15, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus by their fruit, you will recognize them. Ah, do we have fruit? Do we have the fruit of the spirit? Ah, but that's a warning. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. What kind of fruit are you bearing, my brothers and sisters? What kind of fruit am I bearing? Oh, Lord, have mercy. May we each bear good fruit, as thus saith the word of God. Verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Now this is Christ providing the judgment. It's not Smallwood providing the judgment. It's Christ. But it is a warning to all of us. Ah, to make sure that we do know Jesus in a better way, Jesus in a deeper way. For you do not want to hear on that last day, you know, get away from me. I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Oh, the Psalms tell us to fret not ourselves for evildoers. And it is my prayer that we do not become evildoers. Lord, have mercy. Verse 24, therefore, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. 
And, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Now, having lived in New Jersey during several hurricanes, Hurricane Sandy, um, there was another hurricane. I can't remember that hurricane's name, uh, but indeed many houses were crashed down because they were built on sand. That's why we sing that song, On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand. All other ground is sinking sand. And here in this Sermon on the Mount, Jesus has given us his wise words, these words of him. Jesus has given us practical principles for kingdom living while we're yet here on earth. And he says that when we put them into practice, notice it says practice, that means that uh, there's not an anticipation that you get it perfect, but practice makes perfect. We're not being like Al Iverson. That's my man. I should have been his PR person. I would have helped him back in the day. Where he said practice, we're talking about practice. Footnote, he had just lost a dear friend of his. That's why he couldn't be concerned about practice. But Jesus is telling us, put into practice. Um, as some of you know, I really enjoy basketball. And uh, the reason why certain basketball players can hit those threes is because they practice. They practice their shots. Uh, for some people, it's almost like OCD because they make sure that they're in the right place. Their foot has to be in the right place. Their shoulders have to be squared up. They have to have the right position and they practice it enough so that it becomes body memory for them and they're able to shoot and be able to score. My brothers and sisters, Jesus is challenging us to study these words from the Sermon on the Mount and put them into practice so that we can have our foot on solid ground. He wants us to indeed understand the Beatitudes and know how to be blessed. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. He wants us to embrace the notion that we are salt and light. He wants us to know that he didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. He wants us not to hold on to anger, but to make peace uh, with someone we're angry about. Uh, he wants us to know that uh, it's not even when you commit adultery, but when you already have the lust in your eyes. Anyone that looks upon a woman lustfully. <laughs> has already committed adultery. That's why one part of your body sinning, he says to gouge it out. Uh, he talks about divorce, but then how you can cause someone to be committing adultery. He, he warns about making oaths. Amen. You can just say yay or nay. And then when it said, I do love this, you've heard it said that for eye and eye and tooth for the tooth. But let me tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other cheek also. If anyone wants to sue you, take your shirt off and hand them the coat. If anyone forces you to go one mile, give them two. Give to the one who asks. These are principles right here in the Sermon on the Mount to live by. These are the principles that he taught, that he shared, and that we will see these themes coming back again and again as we go through the Gospels. He told us to love our enemies, love our enemies. Amen. He said, love, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. We're supposed to pray for them. We're supposed to bless them. Amen. I have blessed many a person to a promotion so they will be promoted right out of my life in the name of Jesus. <laughs> God bless them. <laughs> Ooh says to give to the needy and you don't have to put it on blast. You don't have to put it on Facebook, on IG, on Snapchat, on TikTok or whatever else they got that you've given to this and given to that. Ah, no, just give from your heart. And let your heavenly father know this is a principle to live by. He teaches us how to pray. I've had so many people in my life, uh, in my role in ministry and teaching, Oh, how do I, I don't know how to pray. Well, we go right to the Lord's Prayer and it's all right here. How to pray. 
you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We have to honor God. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Lord, help me to do your will on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Thank you, Lord, for your daily provisions. Forgive us of our debts, or in King James it says, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive our those who trespass against us. Forgiveness, forgiveness, again, key through this Sermon on the Mount. Forgiveness is a principle. See, the, the other thing about forgiveness, while you're there being mad, while you're there being angry, and while you're holding this grudge against this other person, they are living their life going about being happy, glad, and they're not even thinking about you. Meanwhile, as I've seen some wise people say, you're drinking the poison that they left. No, forgive, forgive other people. Plus we wanna forgive so that our Heavenly Father will forgive us. Yes, yes, yes. As I often say, and I've said it through this study, I like Paul has been the chiefest among sinners. So yes, forgive, forgive and work on that forgiveness. It talked about fasting, talked about our treasures in heaven. You know, where your heart is, that's where your treasure will be. Where is your treasure today? Amen, you can't serve two masters. And then it goes on, he talked to us about worrying. Why are we worrying? We can't add another year to our life. We can't add another minute to our life by worrying. But seek 33. 633 but seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well and tonight we looked at we don't need to judge others we need to stop being so judgmental so judgmental and many often you will see people who are in quote unquote these big positions and they've been judging this person and that person only for them themselves to be guilty of that sin don't judge don't judge. Jesus said to ask, seek, and knock. Our challenge tonight, my brothers and sisters, are we asking God? Are we seeking Christ? Are we knocking for deeper understanding? And then the narrow and the wide gates. Let's go through that narrow gate, that narrow gate that leads us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ. Talked about judging the fruit. What kind of fruit are you producing? Hmm. What kind of fruit? My child for true and false prophets. And he said in verse 21 to 23, that's where he says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. But then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoer. I do not want the Lord to say that to me on the last day. Oh, I want to do God's will. Father, forgive me where I have fallen short. Let us be the wise builder, not the foolish builder. Let's not be like they are in Jersey, building the houses all along the barrier reefs that just get blown down by the hurricanes and blown away from the, by the water in the sand. Let us be wise and let us build our house on the rock. Jesus is the rock of our salvation. Let us build a house on a strong foundation that's built upon these principles. Verse 28, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Here we had Jesus Christ, who in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh in Jesus Christ. He's teaching us here in the Sermon on the Mount. Let us embrace this, these teachings. Let's apply them to our lives each and every day. I always say God has a school you don't have to flunk out of. You may drop out, but you don't have to flunk out. You can keep taking the course again and again until you got it mastered. So let's master these principles that's here in this holy word in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Let's close out in prayer. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the Sermon on the Mount. 
I thank you for these kingdom principles that Jesus laid out so plainly. Oh, it is our prayer tonight, oh Lord, that we will apply these principles to our lives daily, that we will live them out loud. Oh, Heavenly Father, forgive us. Forgive us when we fall short. Forgive us when we don't live in kingdom principles. Forgive us when we live below the standard that you've called us to. Oh God, I thank you that you remember as Pastor Sori says, we're just some dust held together by thy grace. Lord, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you that your mercy is new every morning. Lord, help us. Help us to be the beloved children you've called us to be. Strengthen us, Lord. Strengthen us that we can stand firm, Lord. Oh, God, help us as we practice these principles so that they become muscle memory and that we'll be able to shoot our shot as we share the gospel of Jesus to our brothers and sisters. Lord, we want to be good laborers in the vineyard. We want to be good disciples and ambassadors for Christ. We want to be able to win soul for Christ as we are living in these last and evil days. Oh, Heavenly Father, bless these, your people who watch this, either live or on demand. Oh, Heavenly Father, may a soul be saved. May a heart be renewed. May a mind be restored and transformed. May we each present ourselves, our body, as a living sacrifice, which is our reasonable service and service to thee. This is our prayer. God, whatever I have failed to ask for, please fail not to grant. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the glory forever and ever. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Love you, love you, love you. Please share this video on your Facebook line. Um, and I'll be back again tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Uh, we should be able to have this on demand on the Morning Star Connect on Facebook and on the Morning Star Church, Yarkis, New York uh, website. Take care. I love you, but God loves you best. Know that you are the beloved of God. Now be salt and be light. Twinkle, twinkle. Bye-bye.